What's going on Pixel Hackers? Christian Lovisic from Pixel Feet here. And in this video, we're going to go over Apple iOS 14 update statistical modeling for Facebook ads explain. But before we get started, make sure to smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, and let's dive right in. Welcome to a post iOS 14 world inside Facebook ads. So some of you might have logged in into your ad account and all of a sudden you're seeing this little number hovering around all your data and you're wondering what that is if you don't know already. So whenever you see this little number right here, that means that Facebook is using statistical data to make up for the lack, for, for the lack of data and information coming from iPhones. So Facebook knows that there's uh, purchase events, right? Because we're, we're optimizing for website purchases here coming through from this particular campaign but since it didn't receive all the data details from it is basically building a statistical model around it to predict what the results are so now are the results accurate from what i've seen right now they are not accurate by probably like 25 percent of most of my accounts so from here on now, moving forward, you have to be watching every single piece of data that you have access to, meaning your Google, uh, your Google Analytics, meaning the, the cells in your store, and make sure you are using your UTM tags everywhere. Not all, all of them are going to get through uh, because of the update, but you want to be able to read the data as best as you can. So there's another thing that I noticed ever since this rollout, and it's very, very important. You guys pay attention to this. If you go into your events manager and you go under your pixel and you go under settings right here, make sure you scroll down to advanced matching for your pixel, show options, and make sure all of these are on. Uh, a lot of them, half of the stats here were turned off automatically when the update rolled out and a lot of people are reporting the same thing. So make sure you check that. Make sure you turn all of these back on to make sure you get the most amount of data that you can with the restrictions in place. So now, how am I going to change my advertising uh, due to the changes? So I'm going to go through some of that with you guys right now. Obviously, the first thing that you guys got to remember from all the updates in the previous videos that I made is that one of the most important things you got to remember is that we're going to experience delay reporting. The days of launching a campaign and an ad set and making decisions on the fly on the first day are far from over. It doesn't matter if you're spending $5 or $1,000 a day. Why is that? Because real-time reporting will not be supported and data may be delayed up to three days with iOS 14. So from now on, we have to be looking at everything on a seven day window at least. That's what I'm doing. I'm looking at my results on a seven day window to give Facebook enough time to catch up and receive that data back uh, from everybody. Because the statistical model, I'm telling you, it's, it's at least 25% off. So even after the three days, you're still gonna experience discrepancy there. Okay, so that's number one, remember that. Also, another one of the changes that bothers me the most that's driving nuts is that there's not going to be any support for breakdowns. Meaning when you go in here into your campaign and you try to break everything down by let's say age and gender. So you can have a better idea of your customer avatar. If you want to create custom ads for them for a custom, you know, age demographic or female or male, you're not going to be able to break it down like we do right now. And it's still letting me do it, but this is going away as you can see here. So no support for breakdowns for both app and web conversions, delivering action breakdowns such as age, gender, region, and placement will not be supported. What does that mean? That due to those changes, we're moving more towards optimization and automation from the Facebook ends. Facebook has been pushing this for a long, long time, but it's still not perfect. Sometimes you can run a, a campaign on auto placements, out of everything and it will get your results, but most of the time it's not. And I can predict to you right now, depending on the account, you're going to get different results. In some accounts, you're going to be able to run wide open everything and it's going to get results for you and some are not. So if you want to tweak a little bit and try to decide where to put your placements and your H brackets and all that good stuff, you're not going to be able to see that anymore. So you're going to have to rely on other ways to try to figure it out. Another thing that's changed right away, as soon as the update went, went live, 
is your attribution windows. You're not going to have the 28 day attribution window anymore, meaning that you can't look back at 28 days of results in order to make decisions. So you're going to have one day click, seven day click, which is the default after the Apple prompt enforcement, one day click and one day view and seven day click and one day view. I'm personally at first going to use the seven day click because that's the default uh, from Apple. So I want to keep everything as congruent as I can with their update to try to get or acquire better data that's uh, congruent across the board. But feel free to play with these settings right here. I'm going to be playing with it. I'm going to be testing them. But remember, we're going to look at seven day results, okay, to really be able to make decisions on our campaigns and ad sets because you don't want to cut off ad sets that are done too early. Not that they're done early, that they're getting results. Uh, you don't want to cut ad sets that are getting results for you too early. That's what I meant. In case you do that, though, however, there's a way you can combat that or at least try to handle it for now, uh, especially if you have a bunch of ad sets inside a campaign. This is a small account, so I don't have it set up in here. But one thing that I highly, highly recommend for you guys to do is that uh, at the actual ad set level that you set rules. Uh, if you guys have watched my rules video, there's one that I like to call attribution, right? And what I do is I set up my attribution window to turn my ad sets back on based on the CPA. So if my CPA, let's say, and uh, this account is super small, so I'm going to use an example. So if my CPA is under 20, is smaller, then let's say 20 let's say my cps 25 dollars here right i add it and i get rid of lifetime and i say today you check continuously and you turn on all my ad sets i would set this rule up at the ad set level and the, at the ad level that way if there's delayed data or you know you miss you turn off an ad set and you missed it by accident, or it's getting the results, you missed it by accident, the delay data kicks in, this is gonna turn that ad set back on for you. So I highly, highly recommend that you set up this rule, uh, both at the ad set level and at the ad level. So my recommendations moving forward, it's going to be number one, account simplification. As you guys can see here, uh, this account is very simplified. I have a simple prospecting campaign, a retargeting campaign, an engagement campaign. This is not the first time you guys hear me talking about this, all right, about account simplification and keeping the data together as much as you can. You got to remember, when you put your ad sets inside uh, the campaign, they all share the data between each other. So that helps a lot. And you're giving uh, room for Facebook to simplify. Another thing that happened today, they're starting to enforce the limit on 250 ads. So that's another reason to simplify your accounts. Now, I know for a fact that with the update or before the update, I should say, Facebook was already testing versions of their algorithm in-house without the signals provided by Apple. So they already had a version of the algorithm that they were testing and getting ready for this big, big change. Now, I'm assuming they already deployed the new algorithm. And what happens is with machine learning, if you guys don't know how it works, it has to start learning from all the new data that is gathering. Now, we all know that Facebook is a beast. It's a huge ad, uh, advertising platform with millions and millions of advertisers. So it's gonna take a little bit of time for Facebook to adapt. So moving forward, is it gonna be a rocky road? Absolutely, but it's not, it's, there's, there's no need to worry, okay? Your ad cost might go a little bit up, but Facebook is already working on the AI to figure things out for you. That's why they're getting rid of the breakdowns and all that good stuff because the, the new versions of the algorithm, and they've already been doing this, you know, it used to be called uh, uh, DABA, uh, Dynamic Ads Broad Audiences, where you let the algorithm optimize the campaigns for you and keep it as simplified as, you, as it can to get you those results. So moving forward, I would highly recommend uh, using your catalog, using dynamic uh, campaigns, take advantage of that catalog because Facebook knows what to put in front of the right person at the right time. So let the automation take care of things. If you can still manage your audiences and uh, manage your creative, that's going to be the most important thing that you can do moving forward. It's really, really handling and using the right type of creative for your audience that resonates with that audience. 
and the right copy behind it to get those people to click over and take action. The other thing I recommend, make sure all your websites, all your stores are optimized for conversions. You want to take advantage of every single person that lands on your site, on your site and you want to have the highest probability of them converting into a customer. Uh, also with that, make sure you have a higher average order, order value. I, I would recommend bringing your average order value in your store to anything of $70 and higher and make sure you have massive flows set up with Klaviyo or whatever email marketing tool you use uh, and take advantage of your email marketing campaign so you can get through this. And once Facebook figures things out, you can come out on top uh, with the rest of the big boys and the big advertisers. Guys, if you like that video, make sure to check out the links in the description below. Help support the channel. If you want to keep learning about Facebook ads, marketing in general, or anything related to Shopify and e-commerce, make sure to check out one of the videos right above me. And I will see you guys in the next video.